All right, I'm going to read chapter 12, all of chapter 12 of this, of this whole book. No, sorry, all of chapter 12 of this book. Okay, this book is on categories. The reason it's called Women, Fire, and Dangerous Things is there's a culture that has a category, you know, for those sorts of things. Some of the interesting categorization work in linguistics is uh, various articles. You know, people don't just have one or two, they can have three or four, and, and then it's weird, you know, like, uh, it's like the gender rules in, in languages with gender, you know, most languages. Uh, how did women fire, you know, is it because they think women are dangerous? It's not really that, it's more because of the god of fire and stuff. But maybe that's part of it. Anyway, you can read that chapter yourself. This one is, what's wrong with objectivist metaphysics? And it goes through how Objectivist categories. Um, hello. So I, I made some glasses appointments at, at uh, my health provider, and but I missed them. And then my aunt came to visit. And she said, "Hey, everybody! When they start to need reading glasses, they just get the over-the-counter reading glasses. Just go down to Walmart. Yeah, yeah Walmart. Target's about to open. Um, but uh, and get a pair of glasses." And they're great. How do I look? I love them. I got them based on the frame, not on the look, but she said get one frame, otherwise they fuck up. So I'm gonna wear glasses. How do I look? Do I look good? No. Good. I'm glad I don't. Okay. So here's what we have. Chapter 12. What's wrong with objectivist metaphysics? All right, I'm going to skip the first couple of paragraphs and go straight into the meat here. Still on the first page of this chapter, page 185, if everybody's uh, keeping up. And uh, so here we go. Zebras and fish. Let us begin with Gould's cases of zebra and fish. In these cases, there are at least two different categorizations of living things based on conflicting scientific category, uh, criteria. By phonetic criteria, overall similarity, there are taxonomic categories zebra and fish, but by cladistic criteria, shared derived characteristics, exactly like who their ancestors are. You guys are gonna comment on my lovely glasses, aren't you? No such natural kinds exist because there are no such categories in a cladist's, in a cladist's taxonomy. I'm gonna probably go cladist and cladist back and forth. I don't really remember. I know it's a clade or a clad, or I guess I don't know. If each kind of criteria reflects an aspect of reality, that is the phonetic versus the cladistic, what is an objectivist to say? For an objectivist, natural kinds must either exist or not, independent of any criteria judged relevant by human beings. Objectivists must make a choice, just as Gould felt he had to. The common sense alternative, that if you ask different questions you get different answers, is not available. Take the example, there are two zebrafish in my yard. Oh, well, that would be weird. Oh, I'm sorry, there are two zebras in my yard. I got the fish, and we have zebra fish here, you see. Suppose there are two animals in my yard, and one is a gravy zebra, and the other is a mountain zebra. By phonetic criteria, there is a natural kind zebra that both animals belong to. But by cladistic criteria, there is no natural kind that both animals belong to. Both kinds of criteria have some real status, but they address different concerns. History versus current similarity. Is only one of these objectively true? Does there exist a natural kind that both animals belong to or doesn't there? This question must have a single, determinate answer in order to provide truth conditions for the above sentence. The sentence is true just in the case that there are two entities in my yard that are members of an objectively existing natural kind denoted by the word zebra. In objectivist semantics, the truth condition of the sentence depend on a pre-existing metaphysical reality of the right kind. The same problem arises for a sentence like, Harry caught a fish. Suppose he caught a cola can. Look it up. C-O-E-L-A-C-A-N-T-H. By phonetic criteria, this sentence would be true, but by cladistic criteria, it would be false. Objectivism requires that there be an absolutely correct answer. But there is no objectivist rationale for choosing one set of scientific criteria over another, and there isn't even any reason to believe that there is one and only one objectively correct answer. The objectivist criteria for being in the same category is having common properties, but there is no objective criteria for which properties are to count. 
The Claytists and the Phoneticists have different criteria for which properties to take into consideration, and there is no standard independent of human interests and concerns that can choose between them and provide a unique answer. But objectivist metaphysics requires just such an objective standard. Either there is an objectively existing natural kind zebra or not. There is no third choice. So which is it? Is fish a natural kind or not? What about zebra? What kinds of properties are really that is objectively essential? The Claytists shared derived characters or the phoneticists, those that characterize overall similarity. If each answer has some scientific validity, then any one answer misses the truth. If both kinds of criteria have some claim on reality, then the philosophical concept of a natural kind does not accord with our scientific understanding of the natural world. Rather, natural kind seems to be part of our folk conception of the world, not part of any scientific conceptual system that there will ultimately be general agreement on. As we saw, the concept natural kind plays an absolutely crucial role in objectivist metaphysics. Yet any objectivist notion of natural kind will miss some scientific criteria for categorization. Because you see in biology, both of these uh, approaches are in use and there's a controversy between them. There is an obvious escape route here that an objectivist might reasonably attempt. Saying that one scientific view is right and the other wrong. Let us look closely at exactly what that would entail. The most remarkable consequence is that the objectivist metaphysician who wants to keep the familiar natural kinds in biology must give up the theory of evolution. But that is perhaps the best supported scientific theory of our time. The next section is called the species. And I think I'll wait to go into that. So what we're going to have here is a is, is a point that he's already in the earlier chapters of this book showed that human categories don't fit natural categorization uh, rules uh, that is objectivist ones. Here he goes into okay let's see how the world does. Well it he proves that in biology there is nobody that finds classical categories that is an object is in a category based on its qualities sufficient. He goes into the fact that what is a species? Part of the definition is if it interbreeds with another species. Well, in classical categorization, you can't have that. It can't be based on your geography and your interaction with another set. Your properties put you in an objective category, and that's that. Thoughts? Or do you want to wait till I read the, the next? Let's see, that was just uh, two pages. There's another two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight pages. I'm going to do them all. Okay, bye.